pals, welcome to lab. This week, we will be reading Washington, D.C., a scrapbook. Written by Laura Lee Benson and illustrated by Iris Van Rinback. Hi, my name is Danny, and these are my friends Curtis, Sunyi, and Amanda. This is our scrapbook of a class trip we took to Washington, D.C. We took the Amtrak, train from Philadelphia. Fun fact, DC stands for District of Columbia. It was named in honor of Christopher Columbus. When our train arrived in the city, it pulled into a place called Union Station. It is a train station, a subway station, and a mall all in one. Here are some things we got at the souvenir shops. Union Station was built in 1907 to accommodate inaugural crowds coming to Washington. Some people think it is one of the most beautiful train stations in the world. After dropping our luggage off at the hotel, we were ready to see our first site. We boarded the Metro, the subway system that people in Washington use to get around the city. The Metro subway system is made up of five color-coded lines that run through Washington, Maryland, and Virginia. This is one of my Metro fare cards. Fun fact, the deepest Metro station has an escalator that is 230 feet high. That is about 10 times higher than the average two-story house. Our first stop was the White House. This is where the President of the United States lives. It is also where some of the most important issues in the world are discussed by the President, the President's staff, and foreign dignitaries. These talks take place in the East Room. The White House was designed by an architect named James Hoban, who won a contest with his design. It took eight years from 1792 to 1800 to build it. The White House has 132 rooms. That's about 16 times as many rooms as an average house. Fun fact, George Washington was the only president who never got to live in the White House. His term as president was over before the White House was finished being built. You can see a picture of the White House on the back of a $20 bill. On our tour, we saw the green room, the blue room, the red room, the east room, and the state dining room. Fun fact, the state dining room can see 140 dinner guests at a time. The oldest object in the White House is a portrait of George Washington. It was saved by Dolly Madison as she and President James Madison fled the White House when it was set on fire during the War of 1812. Behind the White House lawn is an oval-shaped park called the Ellipse. The Ellipse is a popular place for concerts and is where the National Christmas Tree stands. The president lights the tree every year while crowds of people gather around to watch. We also visited the U.S. Capitol. This is where the Senate and the House Representatives meet to vote on bills and turn them into laws. These two branches of the government are known together as Congress. The Senate is made up of a hundred senators, two from each state. The House of Representatives is made up of 435 congressmen and congresswomen, each representing his or her own state. If the Senate is in session during the day, a flag flies over the north end of the Capitol. If the House is in session, a flag flies over the south end of the Capitol. If they are in session at night, a light burns in the dome. The Capitol's dome weighs nearly 9 million pounds. On top of the dome is a 19 foot high statue named Freedom. On the inside of the dome is a room called the Rotunda. The curved ceiling is 180 feet high. 
the man who painted it had to lie on his back on a scaffold for 11 months to finish it. Between the Senate and the house is an underground railroad from long ago. Today, it is used as a walkway between the two wings of the Capitol. Fun fact, the Capitol was used to house soldiers during the Civil War. The rooms were turned into living quarters in an emergency hospital. Next, we went to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. We took a tour and saw how the nation's paper money is made. It was funny watching the sheets of money roll through the presses. Fun fact, more than 30 million bills are printed here each day. Paper currency was first used in the United States in 1862 as a result of a shortage of coins and the need to finance the Civil War. 48% of notes printed are $1 notes. At the Ford's Theater in Lincoln Museum, we saw items that belonged to Abraham Lincoln. He was assassinated while watching a play at the theater on April 14, 1865. Lincoln was shot by a man named John Wilkes Booth. Visitors can walk around the balcony and look into the presidential box where Lincoln was shot. The theater has been restored to its original appearance. It holds more than 400 historic objects that tell the story of President Lincoln's assassination. Lincoln liked to spend time with his son, Tad. This is the National Mall, where we stop to eat our lunch. People use the mall to have family picnics, fly kites, or play games like frisbee and softball. It is also a site for festivals and political demonstrations. One popular event held here every summer is the American Folklife Festival. It includes musicians and craftspeople from many different regions of the United States. You can also try a lot of different types of food. Many people also come to the mall on the 4th of July to watch a great fireworks display. On both sides of the mall are many of Washington's museums. This is the Smithsonian Castle, the information center where visitors can learn about all 16 of the Smithsonian museums. The mall has an antique carousel from the 1940s that still runs. Here is a picture of Curtis, Amanda, and Soon Yi after they rode on the horses. Here we are at the National Museum of Natural History. It has exhibits of all kinds of animals, including dinosaurs made of real bones. Curtis is standing in front of a stuffed African bush elephant. It is over 13 feet tall and weighed 8 tons when it was alive. That's about the weight of eight pickup trucks. At the insect zoo, we saw scorpions and tarantulas being fed. I even got to hold a grasshopper that was four inches long and let it walk up my arm. Soon Yi's favorite thing at the museum was a 70 million year old dinosaur egg. We all thought it would be pretty neat if it could still hatch. In the discovery room, we got to touch bones, shells, and fossils. Next, we went to my favorite museum, the National Air and Space Museum. It is visited by over 10 million people each year. It is filled with space shuttles, satellites, old airplanes, and moon rocks. You can see one of the first all-metal planes, the Northrop Alpha, with TWA markings. Built in the 1930s, it could carry up to four passengers in a heated cabin, but the pilot had to sit behind them in a cold open cockpit. Fun fact, you can climb into some of the exhibits. We got to walk through a backup Skylab space station and see the astronauts' living quarters. 
Here is a picture of me standing next to an astronaut's spacesuit. We also got to look through a model of the Hubble Space Telescope and see a duplicate of the Apollo 11 command module. There is a special theater called IMAX that is five stories high. When you watch the movie, you feel like you're in them. We saw a planetarium show where we learned about constellations. Here is a wrapper from the package of a freeze-dried astronaut food that I bought in the gift shop. Yum! Washington has many art museums. This is the National Gallery of Art. It has one of the most important collections of artwork in the world. Some pictures are so valuable that you can only see them by making an appointment first. The National Gallery of Art has two buildings, the West Building and the East Building. The West Building contains older artwork by world-famous artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Claude Monet. The East Building contains modern art by artists like M.C. Escher and Alexander Calder. Fun fact, in between the two buildings is a moving walkway in an underground tunnel. As you move along the walkway, you can see glassed-in waterfall. That is actually the underside of an outdoor fountain. On the next part of our trip, we visited some famous landmarks. This is the Washington Monument, the highest monument in the city. It is 555 feet high. At the base of the Washington Monument are 50 American flags, one for each state. It is the highest masonry structure in the world. Inside, there is a winding staircase with 897 steps. For safety reasons, visitors must use the elevator to get to the top. We rode to the top and could see the whole city down below. Fun fact, the base of the monument is a slightly different color than the rest of it. That is because the builders ran out of money during the construction. When they had enough money to finish it, the stone available was a different shade. The next monument we saw was the Lincoln Memorial, built to remember our nation's 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. Inscriptions of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address can be seen on the walls on each side of the statue. Fun fact, Lincoln's statue is 19 feet high, more than three times as tall as the average man. In 1963, Martin Luther King Jr gave his famous I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial is another important monument in Washington. Our last stop was the National Zoological Park. It is home to more than 5,000 animals. Many of the animals are endangered species. Amazonia is a recreation of a tropical rainforest that you can walk through. In the Reptile Discovery Center, you can investigate reptiles and amphibians up close. At the Think Tank, visitors can communicate with orangutans and gorillas through a computer. The O-Line is a cable system in the park that lets orangutans travel freely between buildings. You can see orangutans right above your head. One of the zoo's most popular animals is Xing Xing, the panda. He was given as a gift to America's children by the People's Republic of China in 1972. Thanks for reading Washington, D.C., a scrapbook with me. Hope you all had as much fun as I did.